Hello everybody, Manix here. Gonna be doing a knife review on the Kershaw Chill. Knife I fell in love with upon first sight and upon seeing its price for the first time. I'm just diving right into this review. I didn't plan anything to say. I'm just gonna go for it. Um, usually I, I don't really rehearse when I do reviews or anything, but I do kind of mentally prepare. Like, okay, what am I gonna say? What am I gonna bring up? What are the highlights? I, I didn't think of anything. I just whipped the camera out and I pulled this knife out. I'm gonna do a review. So. That's kind of the way I bought the knife, though. That's kind of what happened, so it's kind of appropriate. I just uh, saw a picture of it. I've seen Kershaw Chills before. I'm sure I've seen them in reviews in the past, but I never really remembered uh, what they were, or I never really looked into them, I guess. But I saw a picture of it, and it was 20 bucks. And I knew it was Kershaw, and I looked at it. It's not assisted. Cool, I want it. I bought it, and I fell in love with it when I got it. And it's a great, amazing EDC folder. It's one of the best EDC folders out there for the money, I think. For one reason in particular, being that not only is it so light and slim, it's very low profile, but you have a lot of edge here to work with for such a small knife. It, I know it's, it's kind of weird to say, like, it's a small knife, but it's not a small knife. That, that's kind of what it is. It, I would qualify this as a mm, medium size, but medium to medium smaller, but because of its weight and size, I, I don't know what it is. It's like, even though it's a small, slim, light knife, and it's very low profile, and you'll barely notice it's on you, yada yada, you have so much blade here. You have a lot of blade for it. It's, it's difficult to describe. I don't know. It, it just seems like you're getting... It's a very good one-to-one -one ratio, I, I suppose, but... Anyway, let's dive into the specs. So it retails at $37.99, it says on the website, but you can get them for around 20 bucks or so shipped on most websites. It is a liner lock, obviously. We have tip up, tip down, right-hand carry. It's not swappable to the left side, sorry. 8CR13 MOV steel with a bead blasted finish. Perfectly appropriate for the price here. Blade length is 3.1 inches, handle length 3.9 inches, meaning the overall length is 7 inches. 2 ounces, so it's very, very light. If you're into that, I personally do not give a crap how light a knife is, but looking at it from an efficiency point of view, you get a lot of edge and a lot of knife for the weight and the money. So we have medium traction G10, or medium to lighter traction G10. It will soften with use. You know, it's similar to what's on the Spider Co. Tenacious line and such. Non-skeletonized steel liners, not that it's necessary, you might save, like, if you're lucky, 0.1 ounces on something like this, if you were to skeletonize them, and then you'd raise the price a little bit, so, not a big deal. Very smooth, very fast, don't need any wrist movement whatsoever. Depending on how tight yours is, though, you may have to adjust it. There's a hair of side to side, a little bit. Not a big deal, though, for a lighter use knife like this, it doesn't really matter. No jimps, no jimping, doesn't bother me. If it was there, it would be nice, but I, I really personally don't give a crap whether there's jimping on a knife or not. Comfortable, not the absolute most comfortable knife in the world. Like in a way, I kind of wish this toy was just a little bit bigger because it doesn't entirely fit my index finger. But it's comfortable enough, and the guard right there does help. Kind of adds to the choil, like all guards do. Lanyard hole, I don't care. I don't use lanyard holds, but if you want, there it is. Pocket clip is great. You have a decent amount poking them out of your pocket, which most people consider a downside. A lot of people want to have the, the loop over clips that keep the pocket, uh, keep the knife hidden in the pocket. I Again, I, I don't care. There's so many things I don't care about in knives. I'm just, I'm very, very easy going when it comes to a knife, but I don't mind it. Yeah, maybe they could have raised it just a little bit. Some people might consider that kind of a lot, especially with a smaller lightweight knife like this. It's a little bit easier for it to get knocked out, snagged on something, fall, and then you may not know that you lost it until later you realize it's too late. But it rides up a little bit higher when you do it in tip down, as you can see right there. See a comparison. But everybody hates tip-down carry, so... I know, I'm gonna get that one guy, I don't hate tip-down carry, I know, sorry. Personally, I don't hate it, I prefer tip-up, but I... If there's a knife that has only tip-down, but I really like the design, I'm still gonna get it, I don't really care that much, but... To each their own. It comes tip-down uh, default, so... The blade is razor-sharp out of the box, just like all Kershaw's, very good, very well done. ATR 13 MOV is a very good steal for the money, uh... It's on the softer side, but it gets razor-sharp really easily and has... Decent rust resistance, actually, for what you're getting. Because it's bead blasted, expect it to rust a little bit if you don't take care of it. But for the money, it's just a razor sharp knife. Or doing small tasks, that are like opening packages and cutting maybe zip ties or something at the most. Even like cutting cardboard open and stuff, the knife is perfect for that. And if you want to go with the whole tactical use thing, uh, yeah, sure. I don't like to talk defense and knives very much, but um, if you had to use it, that, that's another upside this knife has, is that not only is it just like a strictly utility light use knife but because you have such a long edge here and it's such that drop point right there is very good for piercing the way they designed it it would work very very well in a defensive situation even at this size and at this weight and such because it's fast too 
and you have medium traction right there, so that's good. Overall, it's an EDC knife that I have absolutely no complaints with. It's not the one thing I don't like about small knives is that there's usually there's not enough to hold on to. Yeah, I don't need a four inch blade. I don't need a five inch blade. I don't need a six six inch blade for my daily uses. That's completely overkill. I understand that, but I prefer the bigger knives than the smaller ones. Generally speaking, simply because there's more to hold on to. They're more versatile. There's more you can do with them. Better to have too much edge than not enough edge. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I I prefer the larger knives, but. In this knife's case, it's a small EDC knife that gives you a full grip. Just enough, like just barely enough, just enough to be a full grip and be a small knife at the same time. That's why I love it so much. Outstanding $20 EDC folder. It wrecks so many other $20 knives out there for the money and for the weight and the size. I'm repeating myself, I know, but it's a it's just a great EDC option. I have absolutely nothing bad to say about it for the money. That's it. That is the Kershaw Chill. Bye.